Greetings Magical Mavens and welcome to this late spring bucket list for Beltane season slash Maze Eve season. So if you're new around here on this channel, I really like to take a look at the Wheel of the Year Sabbaths from the perspective of seeing them as six week seasons as opposed to just one day on the calendar every six weeks. This gives us the freedom to see the whole year as magical and not just specific days. And it also gives us the freedom to not feel forced to try and get all of the magical things done on that one day or that one weekend or even that one week. This way we have the entire season of six weeks to really incorporate the themes of the season into our everyday lives and also step into a more magical version of ourselves using those themes. So in the first video in this series from last month, we focused on the energy of the six weeks surrounding the spring equinox, which was on March 21st. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm realizing that I didn't even mention in that video what exactly the spring equinox actually is. As a seasoned witch, pun intended, I guess I subconsciously assumed most folks would already have at least some idea of what the spring equinox is, since it's common knowledge that there are two equinoxes and two solstices every year. But the witch's sabbath that takes place later in the spring isn't quite as straightforward to those who are new to the wheel of the year. The seasonal checkpoint that lands around May 1st, also known as Beltane, May Day, Walpurgis Night, or Witch's Night, is actually what's known as a cross-quarter sabbath the halfway mark between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. So if you're new to the world of witchy seasonal living, there are a few extra sub-seasons within the pagan calendar beyond just the mainstream four seasons. Between each solstice and equinox is a halfway mark that represents the height of the season, whereas the solstices and the equinoxes mark the beginning of the season. May's Eve is a celebration of abundant fertility. Spring is in full swing, giving way to summer. The blossoms are blooming and love is in the air. This is the time to honor nature in the height of its potency, to acknowledge the life force energy of plants, animals, and human creativity. To use a simple gardening reference, you can think of the spring equinox as the time to start seedlings indoors, and then you can think of May's Eve as the time where you have thriving seedlings and they're just about ready to be planted out into the garden. So being the writing witch, tip number one is of course to do your seasonal journaling. For every one of the eight witchy seasons, there are three themes that I like to focus on for each of the eight seasons on the witch's calendar. The three themes that I like to focus on most this time of year are fertility, connection, and the hermetic principle, aka universal law, known as the law of gender. For a much deeper dive into these themes and how we can incorporate them into both magical and mundane aspects of our lives this season to experience more joy and fulfillment, I invite you to check out the video I did last year, which will pop up at the end of this video. And of course, you're also invited to join me and my witchy community of magical mavens over on Patreon, where we're doing our late spring seasonal living challenge, which is a perfect opportunity for both newbies and seasoned witches to reflect on what the seasons mean to us and to support each other in embodying these themes in whichever ways are most empowering for each of us as individuals. Your membership will also include access to these lovely information sheets and grimoire prompt pages that I've designed for the season. The next tip is to do some fire or candle magic. So unlike the solstices and equinoxes, which are celebrated by literally all of our pagan ancestors across the world, what we witches call the cross-quarter celebrations are actually the ones that came from the Wicca religion, which was inspired by traditions of Celtic and Northern European paganism. They're known to practitioners as the Celtic fire festivals. While you don't need to consider yourself a Wiccan or a Celtic pagan in order to add the cross-quarter holidays to your spiritual year, it can be fun to draw inspiration from those cultures for your traditions if you're looking for ideas on how to celebrate. So as a fire festival, the season of Beltane can be a great time to play with fire. Safely, of course. 
It's said that at the ancient Beltane celebrations, bonfires were lit and much merrymaking and ritual was partaken in around the bell fire. In my climate, I tend to think of late April into early May as the perfect time to start gathering outdoors again, especially around a fire if possible. It's just that time of year when it's finally warm enough again to spend the whole day outdoors and then light a fire as the sun sets to extend that warmth, companionship, and comfort into the cool night. Whether or not you're able to have or attend an actual fire, you can think of this season as a symbolic bell fire gathering, representing a time to temporarily abandon your usual routine to be playful and spontaneous in nature and good company. A time to shake off any lingering antisocial coping mechanisms that you may have picked up during your winter hibernation, and remember to connect with others and with nature during this time to be alive. For me, the energy of this season almost reminds me of a time years ago when my friend saved up her fitness points from her work program over winter to get an inflatable boat, and as soon as it was warm enough, a group of us brought it out to a local creek, where we not only reconnected with friends we might not have seen as much over winter, but also ended up getting invited by some totally random friendly people to have a drink and chat by the fire they had built on the shore. And I'm not gonna lie, I did feel a little bit uncomfortable at first because your girl is not normally one to talk to strange men, but I realized that these two guys who seemed totally different from one another had been strangers before meeting there that day, and their kindness to one another and to us inspired me to get out of my comfort zone a little bit. Granted, I was with a group of people that I trusted, and I always recommend using your intuition and practicing safety when it comes to strangers, but it was a prime example of that connection energy that's such an important part of the wisdom of this season. And of course, it's also still a great time to practice fire magic and candle magic in your rituals. I talked a lot about that in the Spring Equinox video, and I shared with you a tutorial for a burn ceremony, and it isn't too late to do any of the things mentioned in the early Spring Bucket List video, so if you haven't caught it already, I invite you to go back and check that one out after this video if you're looking for more magical things to do this spring. The next tip is to do a nature walk or just watch for wildlife. Now, I know some of y'all in warmer climates, or dog people, or anyone who isn't too sensitive to temperatures may have already been doing this, but for those of us who have been hibernating, there are no longer any excuses to keep us from getting out there in nature. In addition to getting out into the garden, this is also the time of year for me when I typically get in my first good hiking or forest bathing trip. I would absolutely love to live closer to a wooded area or body of water. Better yet, both. But since I don't get that consistent access to nature that I'm craving at this phase in my life, late spring is the time, if I haven't managed to already, to really plan an outdoor escape with the elements. And even on days when that isn't readily accessible, this is always the time when I start opening up my windows to allow the bird sounds in, and I find myself watching birds as they go about their daily doings, even as I work. I make sure that my desk is positioned in a way that I can see out the window, so that even as I'm getting stuff done throughout the day, I still get to feel that connection to nature by observing what wildlife is able to be observed in the sort of industrial environment in which I live, which is mostly birds. If it's accessible to you and your living arrangement, I love this time of year for setting up a bird feeder somewhere where you'll be able to see it during the day. So whether you're able to invite nature closer to you, or if you need to commute to nature when you can, or some of both, getting fresh air and a tactile experience of the elements is so rejuvenating and inspiring now that the weather is warming up. The next tip is, of course, to decorate your altar or decorate your whole home in some way. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that decorating is one of the biggest ways that I personally like to celebrate the seasons. I like to go all out with an altar setup, 
an elaborate tablescape, and these two Sabbath-themed Christmas trees that I update every six weeks. But if you're in the broom closet or you just don't have the time or desire to decorate your whole house, even doing something as simple as putting out a different wreath or candle or getting a seasonal bouquet of flowers is enough to give you that psychological trigger that the season has changed and it's something to rejoice in and to savor for the short time that this chapter in your life is here. It's a way of romanticizing your life and celebrating where you are on the journey. So the next tip is to eat berries or to have teas that are made from fruit and flowers or even try making some May wine. So May wine is a European May Day tradition which historically included white wine, strawberries, and an herb called sweet woodruff. I've never actually gotten my hands on sweet woodruff before. Not that I've honestly really looked that hard for it. So even though I would love to try it in the traditional way sometime, I find that it's just as well to make up your own quote unquote May wine concoction using whatever is readily available to you that makes you feel connected to the season. Where I live, garden strawberries and even wild strawberries aren't necessarily even in season just yet anyway, so I figure why not just use whatever similar ingredients you happen to have in the fridge, or better yet, that actually are in season where you live. I've also heard of a wine you may be able to find at the store that's actually called May Wine. If you tried that, let me know what you think of it. And if you're not into alcohol, your version of a celebratory maize you drink can just be a fruit aid or iced tea using the fruits and herbs of your choosing. Because May's Eve is traditionally known as a romantic season, I love to infuse my wines and iced teas this time of year with rose, for example. a movie that brings up the themes of this season for you and actually believe it or not my favorite movie for this time of year is actually the craft now i know most people list the craft as one of their favorite halloween movies but it actually takes place during the opposite season to halloween which is of course may's eve May's Eve is actually opposite on the Wheel of the Year from what I like to call November's Eve, also known as Halloween or Samhain, representing the springing forth of life as opposed to the onset of death. Naturally, a lot of the traditions of the dark time of year are about being deeply insightful and contemplating the meaning of life and death, and clinging tightly to that which keeps us safe and warm when the sun is at its weakest. But now that we've crossed over into the light half of the year, our spirits are lifted, and there's an overall feeling of a weight being lifted off of our shoulders. We've had our time to be deep and contemplative, and we're just about ready to throw caution to the wind and have some kind of a coming out party. So even though they live in California and they probably could have done this during the winter, I love that in the craft, their big spell that they do out in nature is done on May's Eve because it really makes sense. It's a good time of year for it weather-wise, almost wherever you live, because if you live somewhere where it gets really hot, it probably hasn't gotten too hot yet. And if you live somewhere where it's really cold, it's starting to really warm up but also energetically if you're gonna do a big spell especially with a group of people it is the perfect time to do that outdoors so even though I have never actually done a big ritual on the beach or in nature actually with a group of people I love to watch this movie just for a little bit of inspiration the next tip is simply to open all the windows. Now, I know I mentioned opening the windows in my bucket list for the spring equinox season, but again, if you're like me and you live in a cold climate, chances are last time you only opened the windows part of the way and left them open for a short amount of time, whereas this season, it's a lot more likely that you're going to be able to open all of the windows and doors and really, really let that fresh air in and maybe just leave it like that for the whole day. It is so refreshing and just so satisfying. The next tip is beauty rituals or glamour spells. 
One of the traditions we hear about Beltane is this romantic idea that on May Day, maidens would go out into a natural body of water and bathe nude to renew their beauty and attraction power, or that they would literally bathe themselves in morning dew, which I imagine would involve like rolling around naked in the grass first thing in the morning. I don't know, but whether or not this actually happened or whether or not you're actually able to do anything like this yourself, I like to think of this season as a lovely time to do some kind of beauty, love, self-love, or bathing ritual. This can be as simple as taking a nourishing bath and doing a facial or skincare ritual with self-loving intention, or it can get as close as you can to bathing in the morning dew if you want to. If you're simply able to go for a swim outdoors this time of year, that can be your ritual if you bring intention to it. In my climate, I'm certainly not going for any cold outdoor swims just yet in early May, but I'd love to someday have a private walled garden with a bathtub in it, or a bathtub in a greenhouse where I can live out my nature goddess dreams any time of the year. But my current tradition is to keep an eye on the weather the week of May's Eve and see if I can collect some rainwater. I use some of the water as part of my bath potion that week, and I save some of it for another time when I would like to reconnect connect with this magical energy of rebirth and any of my other spells or rituals throughout the year. Another thing you could do would be to collect water from a natural body of water on this day. Personally, I don't really do it that way because when I was in college, my friends and I used to like to go swimming in this little creek near our dorm building. And one day when we were having a grand old time, I looked across the water and saw that my friend was staring at her arm in a weird way. So then I looked down at my arm and I realized that there were tiny little gross bugs all over us. <laughs> so we ran home and showered. And ever since then, I've been a little bit weird about putting my whole body in natural bodies of water. I don't know. I wish that this was not a problem but I can't unsee what I saw. So for rituals where I'm actually going to be bathing in it, I like to use rainwater because I feel like it's a little bit cleaner, hopefully. But you do you. The next tip is to have a romantic date or plan some kind of get together with your friends, preferably outside. Since romance is such an overarching theme of the season, it's a great time to be a little extra romantic, whether that be in a quote unquote romantic relationship or in a more platonic sense. Beltane can kind of be thought of as a sort of pagan Valentine's Day. So if you're single, you can buy yourself flowers or have something like a Galentine's date with friends. Whether it's a fancy afternoon tea, a garden party, or just drinks and treats outside on the patio of a restaurant or your home, it's just a time of celebrating beauty and togetherness and sensuous experiences, even if that's just good food and good company. And the next tip is to embrace some kind of eco-friendly lifestyle upgrade, whether it's just something small or some kind of really big change. As the earth is waking up, it's also time for us to be a little bit more woke, so to say, in our relationship with her. It's a great time to establish new habits that are more environmentally conscious or to upgrade what we're already doing so that it's even more protective of our planet. You can even make a tradition of donating to a nature-based charity as an annual contribution this time of year. I actually already donate $5 a month to quite a few different organizations that support animals and sustainability. So this year, I'm gonna be focusing more on growing hopefully more of my own food and eating seasonally, as well as continuing to learn and share what I learn about composting. So next I invite you to check out this video right here where I actually went through all of my favorite themes for this season in journal prompt form and actually answered them to show you what it really looks like to embrace these themes as you're stepping into the next level version of yourself in the spring. So I'll see you there.